Good morning guys, I hope everybody's having a really nice start to their week. Today's video is gonna be just a little sit down and sniff some decants and samples and have coffee with me and I'm gonna share with you some of the perfumes that I've been kind of toying with and deciding if these are something that I want a full bottle of. A couple of them are very, very hyped up and a couple of them are ones that I've sort of just discovered on my own and I'm sort of playing with back and forth. This is something I'm really trying to do this year is take my time with perfumes and spend a little bit more time getting to know them before I make a decision about a full bottle. I think it's gonna save me a lot of money and also it's really enjoyable just experimenting with new fragrances without having to commit to the full price initially so also let me know down below before we get started if you have any perfumes that you've been kind of contemplating and what is keeping you from getting them or like if you're interested in them and with that out of the way let's get started in today's video all right guys so this is a little container that i keep with my perfumes in my bedroom i don't even know where it came from i think it might have been an old candle container or something and this is where i keep all of my little samples and decants of and like travel sizes and ones that i get from royalty scents or something that i am considering one day maybe getting a full bottle of or i've been kind of playing around with or trying to decide which one i like more than the others i put in here and that way i can reach for them and try them and test them out so this is really helpful for me and it's a huge department for me from what I was doing like six months to a, not even over six months ago like a year ago where I would pretty much just watch reviews and look at notes and blind buy a bottle and hope for the best <laughs> hope that it worked out for me I have to be honest sometimes buying samples although it's really nice to test out 20 or 30 perfumes instead of just one blind buy bottle sometimes getting all those samples can be disappointing because they still cost money and I know that for me, every time I order samples from Lucky Scent or Scent Split or something, I always end up spending like $150, sometimes even more on a whole bunch of samples. And oftentimes none of those samples works out for me. None of those samples ends up being a winner. And so now you're left with just a bunch of samples. Like, what are you supposed to do with them? If you don't like them, you're not gonna wear them. The point is sometimes it, it's a gamble, but sometimes it is better to just buy a full bottle of a hyped perfume because there's almost a better chance you're gonna like it than there is that you're gonna find something in your batch of samples that you like. So it's like, it's a toss up. I'm definitely an advocate for samples, but I've also had a lot of good blind buys. As it so happens, I have one sample in here that is really, really hyped really highly spoken of and it turned out I love it and I've actually ordered myself a full bottle of that one. So as I've told you guys in previous videos as well, I do have a subscription to Royalty Sense. I've worked with them before, but I also have my own personal monthly subscription just because I do like the idea of getting new decants every month of perfumes that I might want to try. And I just think it's a really nice way to be able to try these perfumes. And also if it turns out that you do really like it, you've got a perfume you can take with you on vacation because these are really good little vacation atomizers. And one thing that I like about the Royalty Sense atomizers is that they also have the name of the perfume on the bottom which a lot of other decanters don't have the names on them, which I don't understand why they would do that, but I have a couple in here that I actually had to label myself because they didn't have labels. And that's really, really annoying because otherwise, how do you find what you're looking for? So I have a couple from Royalty Scents that are in here. Those two from Royalty Scents. This one is from Max Aroma. This is one of the ones I had to label myself, which is really annoying. More on that in a moment. This one is also from Max Aroma. As you can see, I've had to tape it and put a label on it. This one is from a decant company here in Canada. I believe that one is from uh, H Parfums. This one is from Scent Split. And this one is from uh, Sense Gift. Okay. Let's start out with one that I got from Royalty Sense. I shared it with you before. I liked it and I almost bought a full bottle and I stopped myself and I was like, no, Alithia, you're going to take your time. You are the whole point of getting the Royalty Sense is so that you can actually wear the decant thoroughly and decide if you need a full bottle. That's the whole point. <laughs> There's a rare occasion when I do get a decant where it's a large decant and I still want a full bottle, then you know I really, really love it. But if I'm sort of just thinking about it, then I'm like, I try to stop myself. Like there's no need to get a full bottle at this point in time. So the first one would be Tom Ford's White Suede. All right, so White Suede, you guys, has notes of thyme, tea, lily of the valley, saffron, rose, suede, musk, sandalwood, olibanum, and amber. 
And this is just one of the most beautiful clean girl. Oh, I've got two papers here. I didn't realize. It's one of the most beautiful, like clean girl aesthetic fragrances I've ever smelled. It really gives me the feeling of like a white linen, crisp linen t-shirt. Um, it's soft and definitely a little bit suede but very musky and very clean and very powdery and very airy and fresh as well. So it's a really interesting fragrance because it sort of has this like warm skin-like leather juxtaposed with this fresh like laundry freshness about it. So it's a very beautiful fragrance. It's very unique, very pretty, very classy. I could see myself wearing this as a signature scent. Like I could wear this all day, every day. White suede. Um, it's just beautiful. It's absolutely stunning. I, I'm literally talking myself into buying a full bottle because that's how much I love this. I just think it smells intoxicating and beautiful and it smells really, really fancy and luxurious and everything you would expect from Tom Ford. Um, so this one I've definitely been, definitely been playing with and definitely toying with. I think if you like those kind of clean girl aesthetic perfumes, um, it's reminding me a little bit of clean skin from clean reserve. This one's a little more leathery than clean skin. Clean skin is more that like sweet musky you, but better. This one's definitely got a little bit more of a floral touch to it. It's very fresh, almost a little bit aldehydic in a sense. It's just stunning. Absolutely beautiful. So if you like those sort of clean girl aesthetic perfumes, white suede, I think you can't go wrong. This is a great everyday scent. So the next one that I've been toying around with is 1861 Naxos from Zerjov. This one I got from Sense Gift. Actually, this one I got like a few months ago. Actually, might have even been last summer, you guys. And I had talked about this briefly, but it was a first impression. And as you guys know, something that I've been doing a lot more lately is really making sure to take my time with perfumes, not to judge a perfume based on the opening or what I get on a strip. Really put it on your skin, take some time with it, because once you actually put these perfumes on your skin, Wow, once you actually wear them, the difference, it is just night and day um, compared to what you get on a strip. And when I first smelled this one on a paper strip, when I first got it, I wasn't impressed. I was like, okay, like I also had still sort of a baby nose when it came to niche. I was still very much new to the world of niche and probably wasn't ready for some of these a little bit more complex, challenging fragrances. Um, like 1861 Naxos. So this one here is a sweet honey vanilla unisex fragrance. It's absolutely beautiful, but it smells much better on skin than it does on paper. Like this paper is not doing it justice, you guys. So this has notes of lavender, bergamot, lemon, honey, cinnamon, cashmere, and jasmine sandback, tobacco, tonka bean, and vanilla. It smells gorgeous on paper, but it's not doing it justice. So on skin, this is one of the most beautiful, smooth, sweet, delicious, interesting tobacco honey fragrances. It has a bit of an airiness about it, but it also has this like sweet honey tobacco depth. Let me see if it smells better at the atomizer than on paper, yeah. Okay, so it even smells better at the atomizer than it does on paper. It's so good. Unisex, I think leaning a little bit masculine. So for that reason, that's the only reason I haven't gotten a full bottle of this one yet is just because although I love it, I think I would like it better on my boyfriend. I think I might like it better on him. And for some reason, sometimes tobacco does that for me. Um, it's absolutely stunning but I think I would prefer it more on my boyfriend. But this is one that I've been just kind of putting on. I like to put this one on before I go to bed at night. I think that putting a perfume on right before you go to sleep is a really good way to test out perfumes. And you're getting these beautiful whiffs of this perfume and it's just kind of like a nice, a nice way to be in the moment with the perfume and test it out. And that's what I've been doing with this one. And I just thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this every single time I have it on my skin. And also the bottle, you guys. Have you seen the bottle? Stunning. So this is another one that I've kind of been playing around with and just not sure if it's like something I would wear all the time, but I just really love the way that it smells. So, all right, the next one just recently came in my most recent Royal Royalty Scent subscription box, and this is Le Labo Rose 31. So when I was on vacation, I actually was able to go to a Le Labo store, first time I've ever been to a Le Labo counter, and I was able to smell all of the perfumes that were there. And this one was the one, this one and actually the Tonka were the two that I really liked the most. And I should have gotten a decant of the Tonka, maybe I still will. Um, but those were the two that I really, really enjoyed the most out of all of them. And this one 
is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. The longevity with them were both really, really good. Just as a side note, they lasted me the whole way home underneath my shirt, one spray of each on either arm. Um, and I just kept going back and forth between this one and the Tonka. And every time I would bring my hand up to my face to have like a drink of water or something, I would get this beautiful whiff of this fragrance. And if I used my left hand, it was rose. And if I used my right hand, it was Tonka. And I think my boyfriend thought I was crazy because the whole way home I was smelling my skin, smelling my skin. I found them both just really beautiful and really addictive. It's got notes of rose, cumin, vetiver, cedar, musk, gaiac wood, a little bit of oud, olibanum, labdanum. So I don't pick out oud in here. What I mostly get is kind of this slightly spicy, really unique, earthy rose fragrance. And it almost makes my mouth water. The rose in here is so realistic, along with that little bit of a spice that I get, that it almost makes my mouth water. It's very sophisticated, reminds me a little bit of Delina in a sense. I don't really know how to describe it, but I really, really like it. I don't know. The only thing I wonder about this one is would I love wearing it as like a full day wear all the time? So that's why I wanted a little decanter so I could really get a feel for, am I going to like this? enough that I need a full bottle. Right now I just love the scent and I like the nostalgia and I like the memories and it's just a beautiful, unique rose fragrance. Yeah, super unique, really spicy, little woody, little earthy. I really like it. Um, so yeah, this would be this one and I really wanna try the Tonka again. Um, so I think I need to get a, a sample of the Tonka. The Tonka I found quite masculine, but also sort of addictive a little bit. And the two of them combined together, like this with the Tonka was lovely. Like that, that sillage I was getting of myself with the two, really, really liked it. And um, yeah, it just really reminds me of my, my vacation a little bit. So that is Le Labo 33 and uh, or 30, 31, sorry. <laughs> what am I saying? This is Rose 31 <laughs> from Le Labo. All right, the next one is a little sample that I have here, and this is one that I've seen get a lot of hype as well on YouTube, and this is Jeroboam's Insulo. And this one is a very sweet, um, sort of a gourmand vanilla fragrance. I was just really, really intrigued by how much hype it was getting and also the notes and really wanted to try it. So I do, as you can see, I have tested it and worn it. I've got about half the sample missing. And this one, this one has notes of vanilla, jasmine, and white musk, although I don't think that's all the notes listed because it does smell to me like there's a little bit more going on in this one. So this is a really sweet, vanilla fragrance. It's very gourmand. What I think is interesting about this one is that it also, to me, has this sort of sweet bakery feeling underneath it, like a sweet pastry feeling. Like, yes, I get sugar, I get vanilla, I get a little bit of a musk, but I also, like, when I smell it, I get the feeling of, like, almost like a croissant or something, like, lingering underneath. It does have a bit of a, a, a very edible gourmand almost like a pastry in here, which is what I think is really interesting. In comparison to something like Fire at Will, this one's a lot sweeter than Fire at Will, and I, I, I kind of like it. Like, it's kind of addictive. I haven't caved and bought a full bottle yet just because I want to wear, I want to wear through the whole sample. If I wear through the whole sample and I find that, you know, I'm craving it enough that you know, okay, I like it enough that I would get a full bottle, then I'll maybe consider it. But as of right now, I'm still sort of like trying it out and playing with it. It does have okay performance. It's not like a monster. Um, I would say like, like five, six hours, it becomes quite soft. It doesn't fill a room or anything like that. It's very sort of addictive and warm and cozy and definitely has a gourmand feel to it. Like I want to eat it. Like it smells good enough to eat. Um, so not overly floral. I don't get overly floral. I get more so this like gooey, sticky, sugary vanilla with a little bit of like almost a pastry undertone. Not that it smells like buns or something. Doesn't smell like, doesn't smell like buns or anything like that. So it does smell really good. Another thing that's worth noting is the juice is really, really dark. Um, it's been dark since I got it and it's a brand new sample. So be careful if you get this one, don't put it, spray it directly on like a white shirt or something. It'll probably stain. Um, but it is a really rich decadent kind of thing. And I do kind of like it. So I'm still very much playing with this. I can't say that I'm like mind blown about it or like, oh my gosh, I need it, but it is very pleasant and I do enjoy wearing it. And 
it's kind of like a nice layering fragrance because it adds a lot of sweetness to whatever you're wearing. Okay, you guys, so this is a sample from Scent Split. This is Blonde Amber from Clive Christian. This is the one out of today's video that I am definitely getting a bottle of. Like without a doubt, hands down, I'm getting a bottle of this. I need a bottle of this, um, which really surprised me. So this is another one that is really hyped up and getting a lot of love. And at first when I saw it appearing in everyone's videos, I thought, oh yeah, that's just because it was sent to them from like some perfume company that they're working with because it is on a lot of people's PR lists. Like this is making it circulation. It's getting gifted to a lot of people from a lot of companies. And I just had to see what all the hype was about. It's a very expensive perfume. Clive Christian is a very expensive perfume house. And it's one that I have not up until this point found one that I liked enough that I was like, I need that bottle. Like this is worth the hype, you guys. This is so worth the hype. I don't even know where to begin to tell you how much I love this. I tested it on skin. Well, first of all, it was a love on paper. Like on paper, I was like, ooh, okay. I understand why people like that on paper. So immediately it went into my try pile. And later that day, I put it on skin and it took me on such a journey. It's such a beautiful fragrance. I will be doing a full dedicated review of this when it comes. I'll show you the bottle. I'll tell you everything about it the journey that it takes me on, opening, mid, finish, because I don't have like, like I said, I hate these little samples so much and you just don't get a full sensation for the fragrance. I also don't think you get a proper wear. So I wanna get the bottle before I actually fully review this for you guys. But what I can tell you is that the scent is incredible and it is worth the hype. So this one little sample, because it is such an expensive perfume, I think this one little sample cost me like $12 or $13 or something. That's how expensive. <laughs> this perfume is. So the notes that you have in here are cardamom, bitter orange, olibanum, rum, ginger, pink pepper, bergamot, grapefruit, dried fruits, white tobacco, tuberose, sandalwood, jasmine, saffron, osmanthus, orris, tonka bean, labdanum, vetiver, myrrh, patchouli, cedar, musk, and vanilla. It's basically everything you can think of under the sun that is woody and a little spicy and a little floral and vanillic. I just, I don't even know where to begin to tell you how much I love this scent. So first of all, I love cardamom. Cardamom is one of my favorite notes in a fragrance. It's one of my favorite note profiles. Anything with a heavy dose of cardamom, I'm almost guaranteed I'm probably gonna like it. This, in a nutshell, essentially is a slightly boozy, spicy, powdery, vanilla, sexy fragrance. Super, super ultra addictive, ultra sexy unisex, but I do think leaning feminine. I do think it leans feminine because for me, I get an overdose. And it's funny because to look on Fragrantica, vanilla is like way at the bottom. Like it's one of the smallest notes in here as voted by people who've smelled this. People give it more of that cardamom and the dried fruits and the tobacco and the tonka. Honestly, you cannot look at the notes and think you're gonna know what this is gonna smell like. It is a masterpiece. It is so well blended. It is so intoxicating. It is so beautiful. Ultra, ultra addictive, lasts forever, great performance. I just rubbed a little bit of this on the back of my hand with the little dabber because it's just a tiny little, I'm so glad that I have the rest of this to wear because I'm gonna wear this whole thing. <laughs> um, but you just get a tiny little amount with these little dabbers and it was projecting. It had me coming back and wanting to just keep smelling my skin over and over. It rubbed off on my sweater and then it was on my sweater for like the next couple of days. I could keep smelling it whenever I picked up my sweater. Um, just amazing. So definitely worth the hype, you guys. Get a sample of it. If you like those kind of boozy, sexy, spicy vanilla fragrances, something like Tom Ford Vini Fatale, although in my opinion, this is better than Vini Fatale, but if you like those kind of fragrances like Tom Ford's Vini Fatale, this is a must sniff. Um, it's not too challenging. It definitely takes you on a journey. It's not linear. It changes a lot from opening to finish and it just becomes better and better and better and better the longer it's on your skin. So this is a no, like not for debate. I'm getting a bottle of this. No questions asked. So this is Clive Christian Blonde Amber. And I would go out on a limb so far as to say that if you buy this one, you don't need to buy like you can take two or three of your other boozy vanillas that you're lusting after and scratch them off your list. That's how far I will go with this one. So yes, it's expensive, but it could replace two or three other boozy vanillas, I think, without a doubt. Scratch them off your list, sell them, 
whatever. This one does it all. This is all you need. So Blonde Amber from Clive Christian. And the last two that I have decants of that I am contemplating getting a full bottle of, either one of them or both of them. And again, unfortunately, these ones are both very expensive or I probably would have already made up my mind. But because they're both very expensive and I don't want to buy both of them at once because it's kind of insanity, um... I need to take my time with them and decide. These are both from Tiziana Terenzi and I ordered both of these decants with my own money as well. They were kind of expensive-ish. I don't even remember how much they were. They were from Max Aroma and this is Orza and this is Talea. So I had to go ahead and label them myself, as you can see, because they did not come labeled, not even on the inside of the of the decant does it have a label so that's the only thing I would say about Max Aroma they do have a great selection and you can find some really good discount codes for Max Aroma and the shipping was pretty good and all of that stuff and the fragrances are legit like obviously all that stuff nothing bad to say about them but I really wish that they would put the names of the perfumes on the decants because this looks a little bit weird and also it's like a very heavy decanter so it's like a metallic decanter um, with leather or like faux leather going around it and it's very heavy and not only do they not have the names on it but when I go to pull it out of the container look what happens so when I go to pull it out of the container it takes the entire decant out of this part which is extremely annoying and it happens not just with that one but with this one too and I also had another one I actually ordered a decant of Hale Bop and it happened with that one too so it's really, really annoying. Then you have to pull this and put it back in and try not to spray it all over yourself when you do it. So it's just very finicky. So not only does it not have the name of the fragrance, but they're just cumbersome and they're not my favorite types of decanters. So that is the only thing I would say about the Max Aroma. If they're watching, um, they need to work on that because let me tell you, getting something like this is a lot nicer or getting something like this. This is a lot nicer. And if you want, you can pull it out, but this is so much nicer. So I really wish Max Aroma would do something like this. So these are the two that I'm considering getting a full bottle of. I'm not sure which one I want and forgive me, my hand is sore. So I'm just gonna put the camera down for a moment. So we have Orza and Talea. These are from the Sea Stars collection and they're in the really beautiful bottles with the little starfish on top. And they're really pricey, just like the Clive Christian Blonde Amber. So I don't know why these days I'm falling in love with these perfumes that are super expensive. And my tastes have definitely changed. I've crossed over to the wild side or the dark side or whatever you want to call it, where I'm kind of obsessed with perfumes and want to grow a collection with you know, some really interesting niche perfumes that are really striking my fancy and catching my attention these days. So these are the only two from Tiziana Terenzi, with the exception of one, which is Spirito Forentino, that I really can see myself wearing. I've told you guys before that with Tiziana Terenzi, for some reason, I have a really hard time because I find that they all have this underlying DNA about them that I have previously found a little screechy, a little headache inducing, and I just didn't love them. Now, these two do both have that same underlying Tiziana Terenzi DNA, don't get me wrong. Um, they still do smell like Tiziana. If you've smelled Tiziana, you know what I'm talking about. They all carry this DNA with them. But these two I really like, and I think that they would be beautiful for the summertime. And I'm just kind of not sure which one I want, but I definitely want one. I will eventually decide on one, and I will eventually bring one into my collection. And perhaps I'll eventually bring both. I don't know because they are different enough that you could have both. And Talea has notes of pear, Bulgarian rose, citruses, hawthorn, jasmine, ylang ylang, heliotrope, musk, mahogany, Haitian vetiver, oak, and Cambodian oud. So this one is actually, despite, you see I hate these things so much, <laughs> despite the notes, this is a very fresh, beautiful fragrance. So I'm just going to smell it here. Okay. So it definitely does have that Tiziana Terenzi DNA to it. It reminds me a little bit of Herba Pira, a little bit of Kirke, but I think that those fragrances also have this very similar underlying DNA. So that's the first thing it reminds me of definitely is along the lines of Herba Pira. If you like Herba Pira, you'll probably like Talea. And again, this does smell much better on skin. 
than it does at the bottle. So it's fresh, it's fruity, it's very summertime, it's floral, but at the same time, even though it's very fresh and fruity and floral, it has a big performance, and it definitely has that Tiziana Trenzi underlying DNA, which I'm sort of starting to appreciate and starting to like. Two years ago, I would not have liked this. Today, I really, really like it. Um, and I just think that this one would be so perfect for the summertime. I think this would be a beautiful summertime scent, very fresh, um, lots of pear, very juicy. And I just think that there's something about it that's kind of addictive and I really like it. I will say though that I think I'm leaning more towards Orza. So this one is Orza, and the difference between Talea and Orza is that Talea is a little bit more simple and a little fresher and more about that juicy pear and this juicy fruity fragrance. This one is a little bit more complex. It does have a little more depth. It's a little warmer, it's not quite as fresh, and it goes more in the caramel vanilla direction. So this one has notes of wild berries, coconut, green apple, plum, orchid, mandarin orange, magnolia, jasmine, lily of the valley, bulgarian rose, caramel, musk, vanilla, sandalwood, benzoin, and amber. And this one, you guys, I just, I don't know what it is, but this one really, really speaks to me. I really, really like this one. Yeah, I really, really like this one. I think, I think if I had to tell you right now what my favorite one is between Orza and Talea, it would be Orza. If I had to pick one right now, go into, go to the perfume counter and pick out just one Tiziana Terenzi, it would be Orza, for sure. So it does have that Tiziana Terenzi DNA and it is fresh and it is floral and it is fruity and it is summery, um, but it also has this warm, caramelly kind of sweetness to it and depth to it. Yeah, I just really, really, really like it. And it does smell, again, better on skin than it does on paper and at the bottle. Um, so I don't have either of them on my skin at the moment, but I don't want to make them my sense of the day. If I spray them, I'm stuck with them. They're both really strong. Um, but these ones definitely do both smell better on skin. And so I'm kind of just trying to decide which one of these will be my full bottle. Um, they're both great for different reasons. Orza's a little warmer and more kind of sensual, but still has that freshness about it. Talea is definitely more of that like fresh, like juicy summertime, you know, fruity fragrance. And they both have something I really like about them. And I'm just kind of um, wearing them and also not wanting to splurge and spend the money on those ones because honestly, currently, my priority is Blonde Amber from Clive Christian. So those are my current sort of samples and decants that I'm considering getting or toying with and seeing how much I really need or want a full bottle of any of them. And yeah, like I said, definitely my priority is the Blonde Amber from Clive Christian. That is the one that just like was mind blowing to me. Um, and then I guess my second ones from that would be probably Orza from Tiziana Terenzi. Um, and then I'm, I'm really liking the Rose, the Rose 31, but I have to take some more time with it. And the Tom Ford White Suede, the Tom Ford White Suede is just beautiful and I could easily have a bottle of it right now and be really happy with it. And then I'm kind of just toying around with the Insulo and I honestly don't know about the Noxos or the Naxos for myself. I do think that that one is a little bit more um, appropriate for a man, for my boyfriend. I really like the way it smells, but I think I would, I think if I wore it, I would be bothered by it and think it was too masculine. So that's my thoughts on those samples and decants. Those are my kind of current ones that I'm just trying out, seeing how I feel, toying with, slash have already decided I definitely need a full bottle. By the way, I have tons of samples upstairs and I also have a whole bunch from the House of Siage. I'm gonna be doing more in-depth reviews of a lot of those fragrances and also just talking about other fragrances that I've got samples of that are super hyped up that I just don't really think are worth it for me or why they're not safe blind buys. So let me know, you guys, um, if you have any samples and decants that you're playing with yourself and that you're kind of trying to decide if they're full bottle worthy or not. And also let me know if you like these videos where we talk about samples and decants and which ones I think are full bottle worthy. Um, yeah, and that is it for today's video.